So anosmia, as, as I think you know, is that a, and agusia, the loss of the sense of taste, are both important manifestations in people who have COVID-19. Some people say it's almost everybody has it to a certain extent. Other studies show only a fraction of people. And it's probably the truth is in between that the people that a very large fraction develop it, but it may have variable amounts of effects in different people. And in terms of mice, we with the we what we found, which was puzzling to us, is that the nerves that deal with the sense of smell are not infected, and and but are involved because they clearly people have anosmia, and we think it's because there's infection of the cells next to those nerves, and uh, this is causing some sort of destructive process on the actual parts of the nose that deal with cell smell sensation. So how that's working is something we don't know, but we know that there seems to be less uh, expression of the olfactory receptors in neurons. So this is still a work in progress trying to figure out the details. And I think it will be relevant for uh, people as well. It seems to be pretty close to what's happening in people. So we'll see. Looking in the olfactory epithelium, it's almost as if Myeloid cells that are normally in the basal layer, probably to prevent various pathogens and antigens from getting into the nose and affecting the immune system, move from that area of the, of the base of the epithelium into the epithelium themselves around infected cells. We don't see much evidence for other cells being involved, other inflammatory cells. And then the second thing we found, which is still something we're really working on and interested in, seems that in many organs, myeloid cells from the periphery, from the blood, infiltrate or go into these organs and may cause disease, may cause some of the manifestations of the disease that we see in these different organs. So this is still something we're trying to explore, trying to see what the myeloid cells are actually doing. This is mostly speculative at this point. What we know is that some people have anosmia, don't recover uh, quickly. Uh, and many people recover most of the way there, but not all the way there. So they don't get 100% of their sense of smell back. Some people we know develop phantosmia, smelling, smelling something that's actually not there, or parosmia, where they look at a piece of chocolate and they smell uh, a raspberry um, or something like that. Usually not so too not not usually too positive smells like that. Um, so th those are some of the long term manifestations that we see. And then the big concern is that this anosmia by the kinds of inflammatory destruction that we think is going on may predispose people who develop it to a chronic uh, or persistent neurological dysfunction or neurodegenerative disease like Alzheimer's. After the influenza epidemic in, 20, in 1918, there was, a, uh, out, there was an increased number of cases of Parkinson's disease and this encephalitica uh, lethargica, which was another brain manifestation. So whether this will play out over COVID-19, we don't know yet. If this is truly all inflammatory, it's, I think that what we're dealing with is long-term effects on neuronal function, not necessarily neuronal death, but either the, co the connections, as it were, are no longer normal, or the, func the connections are normal, but the function isn't normal somewhere in there. Uh, it's, it's hard to really have a good explanation right now for what it is, but I think it's important for us to try to understand this. Well, I think the very immediate question we want to know is what are these myeloid cells doing in the brain and other tissues? Are they doing something that are leading to the anosmia, leading to long-term persistent effects. We also want to do careful behavioral studies on our mice uh, to see if it mimics what we see in people. And of course, ultimately, what we want to do is in our, learn something from our mice, both in terms of mechanism and in terms of behavior modification that will help patients who have anosmia or other CNS uh, complaints. Right now, for anosmia, the best uh, treatment that I know of is olfactory training. So people are trained to regain their sense of smell. Uh, and there's, there's not a chemical way or any other way right now to reverse the process.